Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here, and welcome to the round one review of my AFL fantasy team for the 2015 season. Of course, the season kicking off over the weekend, Easter weekend. It was an interesting first round, to say the least. I avoided some big guys that did really poorly, but I had my own players that did poorly anyway, but it's round one that happens. I'll talk about the midfield a bit later on, uh, but I'll just focus on my score now, then we'll go in. I picked up uh, 1,856, which ideally, when you forget about who else did poorly and whatever, to me, that's a poor score. I want my expectation is 2,000 each week. And when you yeah get along in the season, maybe halfway after the buys or something, you want to at least be hitting maybe 2,100, 22 if you can. But I, I was disappointed with a lot of my players. Sure, I did have some good scores. Some players I really liked with what they did. But let's focus on the defense first. Jack Nunes. In the preseason, I believe, you got two tons over 100 points. And I think there was another game uh, where you scored 90. And then, you couldn't even get half of that, Jack. <laughs> Pretty much summed up how St. Kilda played. They got close to GWS, but it's GWS. Of course, they're improving. But St. Kilda, Jack as well, man. I could, like, it was fairly close for a lot of the game against GWS, but St. Kilda, they did not impress me at all. They were really, really poor. And you can see that with other scores as well. Hibbert, Essendon, they, I guess conditions played a part. Essendon, obviously, have gone through a lot and they were in a great position to win against Sydney. But obviously, that lack of game time uh, with their best starting 21, I suppose you can say, or best just 22, their best team... Lack of match practice, uh, or at least competitive. Not the, Of course, they would have had training matches uh, with their own team, but it's not the same. Like, intra-club matches. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, yeah, it's not the same kind of thing uh, compared to the NAB games. Even though they're just practice games, really, uh, the NAB challenge, it's still competitive games against other teams, and they lack that. Uh, their best players, of course, because of the... I don't, I don't want to talk about it because... It should be done and dusted because I, I hate hearing about it and it should be not talked about anymore. Uh, but Hibbard, who a guy was really consistent, I feel I'm going to give him another week. But that's the thing with AFL fantasy compared to how it used to be, like in Dream Team or whatever. But I won't talk about that uh, because it's changed. But prices change right away. So Jack Nunes is a guy I'd maybe want to have faith in going into round two. But now I'm considering trading him and that's what I'm thinking with this series I might want to just do this for AFL Fantasy because I know it's probably the most popular uh, I know Supercoach oh, they're probably about the same aren't they in the terms of popularity but because AFL it's owned by it, this is on the AFL website you know so yeah leave your thoughts anyway but I'm thinking to do a review of the week and then I'll yeah preview my trades going in my two trades because of course there's unlimited trades and yeah, super coach. I may not even make trades this week because that's a the thing. There's less trades, but here you can make two per week. Uh, so both Hibbard and Nunes are on my radar. But then <laughs> there's other positions. Uh, but players I was impressed with: Luke Hodge. He's just amazing. He's a superstar player, and he's still however he's like 31 or something. 30. He still gets a job done. 115. Amazing. Hawthorne. They look very dangerous. Big win against Geelong in the first round. Amazing and. The rookie defenders, there's not too much of them, and I'm starting, I guess you can say I'm starting at least two, but Brett Goods is fairly, you could consider him as a rookie price player at 209, but an expensive one at that, but I put him in because I think the first season he played, he was fairly proven, did okay over the nab, and he pulled the 70, which is, that's really good, that's good for his price, that's what you want so you can upgrade. How much did he increase in the first game? See, 17k. If he can continue to do that, we can upgrade him to someone else. But if he keeps posting like at a minimum of 70, that's acceptable for the time being. Um, Saad, Adam Saad from uh, from Golko Suns, 62. That's passable, again, for his price. See, he went up actually more. You can compare. If you if you don't know too much about our AFL fantasy, but if you do, you, you probably know this anyway. So because he's cheaper... And he, but he got a lower score than Goods. He's gone up more. He's gone up 20K because his average is lower. His price lower. And Goods, he got more, uh, but he didn't go up as much. 
fairly close, but still. But just imagine McIntosh with 101. He was even lower. He's gone up 38k. But I don't want to make a profit on him unless it's later in the season, at least after the buys or something, because he. I watched him closely because, unfortunately, I'm a Carlton supporter, and they basically after the <laughs> the first yeah the first quarter it was terrible performance, so it was easy for players to rack up points. But I'm pretty sure at the start of the game he just was on fire and went on. So he's a guy that's going to make massive profit, and like I said, if he can continue to get decent scores, I'm probably just going to keep him there because for me, defender um, yeah defender premiums at least they're ho- unless they're Hodge or someone really really good they're gonna do poorly in games they're not gonna do consistently well that's why i didn't want to spend too much money at the back i put three guys i thought that could turn up uh in the end i got two and one of them wasn't the one i expected so hibbard and noons are on my chopping block for this week but i probably will only get rid of one of them depends on the other positions as well but now um the new the interchange as well those other rookie players um i had hamling in from uh, western bulldogs but obviously he didn't play so i just brought in i only had oxley but then i brought in nathan brown because you know nathan brown like a fullback isn't going to bring in heaps of points and oxley did even worse and let's see how much did they increase oxley he didn't even increase at all he's probably right on that cusp <laughs> like what is yeah what is priced at yeah 25 that must be it and nathan brown could be really similar if yeah, he just went up really slightly at 3K, so we'll see what's going to happen there. Oxley's going to have to score more than 25 points <laughs> to go up if he keeps his spot in the team. But Collingwood, they're on the other side. They played well. Maybe that's why the defenders didn't get too many points. But midfield, midfield was a bit up and down for me. But it could have been a lot worse if I had Tom Rockliffe and Gary Ablett. I'm shattered I didn't get in Jordan Lewis, but the thing is, I would have had to... like. He's gone up 22. I suppose it was really, he was close to side bottoms price. <sighs> could have, yeah, could have got him in. And we've only got, um, yeah, like $1,000 in the remaining salary. So it's not like I can upgrade to someone a lot. Unless, yeah, I downgrade uh, one of the guys I want to trade. And then, yeah, I can upgrade to Lewis. And Lewis, he, in the last season, like from last season until now, he's been, he stepped up. I don't think he averaged over 100 in the season. He may, maybe one season, but he was usually around the 80 to 90 average. But yes, there's a few disappointments in my midfield. Uh, Pendlebury, he got, yeah, obviously as captain, he got over that 100, which I was I was pleased with because that's a struggle in this week. Uh, you got other guys like Sidebomb didn't make it. Uh, Dyson Heppel, who was a great pick for me, 111 points. Not sure if many picked him, but I rate him as a player. He's fantastic. Uh, just gets the ball and that's what you want for dream team he may not be the best kick in the world uh accurate like efficiency but that doesn't matter for afl fantasy you just want to get the ball and he does that uh very reminiscent to a dane swan who's in my team as well he i reckon dane swan will get close to his best he probably won't be as good as he used to be but i reckon he's still got that ability to average at least 100 so for a forward that's excellent uh so dyson heppel he's one of those guys that in the past, like he's one a player I really like. In the past, I probably went for a player I really liked, and maybe there was a better option, dream team wise. But yeah, I like that player more. But this case, Heppel's amazing, and his hair's OP, so he's yeah found a spot in my team, and I'm so pleased that he got over 100. Fantastic performance. But then Dane Beams as well, again over the preseason did pretty well. Brisbane. Uh, and yeah, Rockliffe being injured. How how is it long? It's about six weeks, is it? Like. I think about six weeks, uh, but you don't really know with longer term injuries, they could be out for longer, then they're going to have to play some games in the reserves, at least one game to get their fitness back, but if they're a superstar like Tom Rockliffe, you want him to come straight in, if he's fit enough, but yeah, you've got to manage those kind of injuries, especially, yeah, his was pretty severe uh, on the look of it, but anyway, Dane Beams, I, like those price, <laughs> yeah, players at those prices, you got to expect 100, and Mark Murphy, mate, I thought you could have got back to your best, but it was not It was not to be. So I've had my poor midfield choices as well. And, and see, this is what I'm, oh, this is what I was going to do. Where's Rich? This is probably a bad, yeah, you've got to say this is a bad decision by myself. I went with Mitch Wallace instead of Rich. They were around the same price. Actually, Rich was real. he's still cheap. He went up 30K and Wallace, what did he end up doing? See, the thing is, it may not be as terrible, but I could have got Rich instead, you know what I mean, for a bit cheaper. But Wallace, he only scored 83, and he still went up 12K, and it was really impressive over the preseason. 
um, and he's pl not playing a tagging role now because of Libertore going down. And look, Dalhouse, another Bulldog coming in, decent score. And even Honeychurch for his price got a 69er there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Wallace, I'm still, I'm going to keep the faith in him. You know, even though prices have changed after round one, you still don't want to make those uh, knee-jerk trades, as they're called. Wallace, still, 83 is respectable. It's still some more than other players. You think he got more than Ablett. <laughs> so that's something to take into account. But yeah, we'll just take that off if we can. And, yeah, that's a bit to cover the midfield. Cripps, again, he's a guy who shined over the preseason, failed uh, during the game. Uh, for first round, anyway, a really poor. You expect him... See, that's the thing. People are getting really mad that these rookie price players are doing poorly, but you can't expect them to get tons and stuff, like over 100. You can't expect that. Even Alice Yolman, he, again, one of the guys who got heaps of the ball in the preseason. But this... It's round one. It's a high, and Adelaide even did well. They they killed uh, Kangaroos, and he still got an average score. But that's what you got to expect for these kind of price players. Uh, Vandenberg, he was impressive. Another player with sixty nine, getting some luck in that department. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's gone up twenty three k. Really impressed me. It was really really good. And also Newton, how much has he gone up? See, he almost got to a hundred. Uh, where I almost tunned up. Uh, he'd gone up 29k. He was one one of more of those expensive... Like him and Brett Goods, they were around that expensive rookie price. But with those guys, you're probably going to get a bit better scores. So, yeah, Newton, I was really happy uh, with how well he did, both him and Vandenberg, as my Melbourne rookies in midfield. Mark Murphy, though, man, how much did he go down? 13k. So he's not absolutely premium price. He's almost pushing towards... He's not quite mid price, but he's pushing... The See, I could downgrade him to Daniel Rich, really, but uh, Murphy, come on. He's the captain of Carlton, so we have to step up. Bell Chambers, he was the cheaper kind of ruck option. Wanted to save some money there because I had him in Supercoach as well, so I wanted to transition that, but uh, of course it was bad conditions as well, so I'm going to give him at least one more week because he might have gone up as well. Yeah, he went up 6K, so at least he's going up in price, so at least we're making some money. That is a good... A uh, good thing. None of the reserve ruck played. But yeah, Holmes there from St. Kilda just put him there for a cheap option. Then got Naismith, who's probably the best option to play, I think. I think there's a guy from Gold, um, GWS as well. Um, but that's about it. Not too many options as the bench ruck. But then there is Goddard, 72. Again, not the best conditions against Sydney. I got a, but then Heppel got 111, so you can't really use that as an excuse. But obviously, there's different style of players. Dane Swan uh, still picking up the points. Uh, terrible season last season. It's you could just say bad, not terrible, but because of how good he was, uh, he still has that ability. Just injuries and all of that should be back at his best, or at least close to it. But Dalhouse really impressive. Uh, one of my highest score, uh, or almost yeah, the second highest was it? Second highest score in the team. Uh, to Luke Hodge, only two points behind him. So Luke Dalhouse, he went up 12K, and he's going to yeah keep going up uh, the looks of that. Um, who's Bulldogs playing next game? Richmond. So that's a kind of game yeah, where a lot of points can be picked up, I feel. And Honeychurch as well. For his prize, he went up 18K as well. A 69. Dustin Martin, a guy who killed it over preseason. And he's gone down 21K, but again, you've got to keep the faith in him. He's a superstar, really. He is, and... Yeah, Richmond, he, they're playing against Bulldogs as well. He could potentially pick up a good score. And Salem as well. He had two really good games in preseason. One 90 score and one score over 100. So, even though McCarthy, because he's a key forward. I was surprised he got 74. Both, yeah, <laughs> Clark and McCarthy, key forwards. Those kind of players don't generally, especially young key forwards, those players don't generally get higher scores. It's more those midfield, smaller types who, or yeah, in Salem's case, he plays along the halfback. Um, and he, I thought, I'm not sure, anyone else, did you watch the Gold Coast, or at least watch Salem closely, if he was in your team, I thought he got a lot more of the ball than his score indicates, I feel 54 is, not, it's right, of course it's technically right with his stats, but I just felt he got, he did better than a 54, just judging on how much he got the ball, I was really surprised, because I actually, I didn't go to game, I just uh, watched it at a local club, but, and I was really surprised that, because I wasn't checking scores, obviously. Uh, he's one of the guys I would have expected to get at least a 70, maybe pushing towards 80. I just felt he, he did better than a 54. So when I got home, I was surprised with that. 
And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. You got McCarthy, really impressed with his output. He went up 24K, one of the biggest growers. Like I said, I was really surprised because he's a key forward. He did really well, though. Impressed with him. And Mitch Clark, he is back. But at his best, when he was at Brisbane and even at his time at Melbourne, he averaged, I think, around the 70s and 80s. If you just yeah count up his tally for all the season, so if uh, in a game where they did poorly as well, if he can at least score eighty, I know it's a lot to expect, but eighty per game. Like imagine in a game where Geelong actually win and he scores maybe like a four goal, yeah, three or four goals. I think he scored two against the Hawks and he picked up eighty six. There's going to be games where he scores a hundred. So right now, I'm going to start him. I'm going to start him. So, take him off. I don't think you can click on there. Uh, Geelong's playing in Frio. Ooh, that's a tricky one. But it's Geelong home ground. Usually, they play they play well at home. So, yeah. At this point in time, Mitch Clark's going to make it instead of Salem. Even though I still have faith in Salem in the position he plays on the halfback. And especially, yeah, he wasn't really getting tagged or something. Like, a, like, as, like with a defensive forward or something. Honeychurch is, like, the decision. Start Honeychurch, McCarthy, or Salem. But, yeah, we can make two trades. So, the trades that are on my mind, obviously, you look at the price, how much they cost, and their score, like Dustin Martin. I still have the faith he's going to score. Like, to be honest, if I trade him out this week, he's going to score 100 against Bulldogs. That's pretty much guaranteed. I just have that bad luck. But everyone says that as well. So, he's not really on my chopping block yet. But if he does poorly against Bulldogs, uh, he's definitely on that uh, midfield, Mark Murphy just wasn't impressive, really. He's a Carlton player. I support Carlton. Uh, he used to average over 100. There was one season he averaged real, I think it was like 112 or something, was really, really good. But obviously with Judd not really being tagged anymore because obviously getting older and that, the attention goes to him. And I just thought he'd break that eventually, you know? He was okay during the preseason. But he's on my chopping block. Uh, you can kind of just look at options around his price, because, yeah, you can make, I'm going to make the two trades because you pretty much can. And I'm lucky. I've, look, if, I look at it this way. Rockcliffe got 79, and you compare that to maybe Dane Beams because they play for the same team. And Rockcliffe, look how much more expensive he is uh, than Beams after dropping. Did Beams, how much Beams drop? Only 11K. Still disappointed to drop. But, yeah, he was over 100,000 more expensive than him. And he got four more points. So I'll see. Some people have Rockcliffe instead of Beams. Some people had both. <laughs> but I'll see that. And I did better by four points. And saved a bit more money. Then there's Ablett on 61. That's so low for Ablett. So the next games, if he doesn't score over 100, he's going to drop insanely. I'm definitely going to eye up Rockcliffe and Ablett. If he ever, like if Ablett doesn't get fit, I'm going to watch him closely, and if it doesn't look like he's going to improve, he's going to have that problem all year. I'm never going to get him throughout the whole season if he's going to get scores like that around 60 to 70, which he will do if with this injury. He needs a break. If For Gold Coast, if they want to make the finals, they have to rest Ablett for a month. I'm just going to put my opinion out there. They have to give him a good rest to get fit, not play him at 75%, even though Ablett at 75% is probably better than most players. <laughs> he's still probably the best, but... Uh, he still pumped up, I think, like, what did he get, like, in Supercoach? I know he tunned, got over 100, but in Dream Team, in the Dream Team or AFL Fantasy points, he's not going to do well because he's not going to be getting marks and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, that's just my opinion on Ablett. But, yes, I can just compare that to Murphy. Murphy got six more points in him, and he's even cheaper. So I can just look at the... There's, there's always positives in things. you got to look at the positives. So my positives was not getting Rockcliffe and Ablett. That's saving a lot of money, but then the negatives is maybe not getting someone on uh, on Jordis, uh, Jordan Lewis's level, like pumping up 156, but uh, will he do the same, and you could say that maybe it's just one week, but last year it was so consistent, so I'm consider I'm going to have to downgrade one of the <laughs> yeah defenders uh, to maybe upgrade, I'll probably think to upgrade like Murphy to Jordan Lewis, if I can, I'd have to drop really dramatically one of my defenders, so if we go to defense, or defenders, uh, we can see who's available. You know, like, if we want to take out... Yeah, I'm going to have to take out Nunes. I completely don't rate <laughs> St. Kilda. Uh, do I, have, I don't think I have any other players. I have, yeah, Holmes. He's just a bench player, but no one else. So if you just think about... I'm not going to do the trade now. I'm just showing you some options. Uh, if I want to... And we trade out Murphy as well. If I want to get in Jordan Lewis... Because I think he's so consistent. He's a guy that's not going to get tagged. <laughs> he used to be that kind of player that actually tagged players. 
But, where are we? Oh, you can't make two... You can't make two trades at once, can you? I thought you could. It, I, I don't... And you go Jack Noons as well. Huh. Well, how come you can't make two changes at once? That changes dramatically. Obviously, I can still do it. I'm just going to have to calculate it a bit more. And you can reverse trades anyway, can't you? So, if I was going to think about it... Because then, yeah, you can just not save it or whatever. Um, we'll go to Defenders. And we'll have to... Who did the best, yeah? Um... Order by total points. The guy like Tom McDonald was really impressive, but again, key defender. You don't know if he's going to consistently do that. Taylor Hunt could be an interesting one. But I'm really hesitant about guys that have gone up a lot because, yeah, you don't know if they're going to do the same. I'd have to think about it a lot more, but you can just do it like an example. Like Shane Savage, you talk about St. Kilda players. He impressed me, but he scored a couple of goals. Go think about that for a second. Uh, now you're pushing towards guys that only picked up like 80 uh, Sean Higgins didn't do a lot. He scored some goals, though. He may, he seemed like a forward kind of player. Now, Suckling... Yeah, Suckling are guys I think about, but, like, he's not that amazing. And, of course, if you jump on... Like, I could go Taylor Hunt here. He's obviously playing a midfield role with Richmond. But, he's, again, I could just do this as example here. Trade successful. <laughs> Did that happen? You now... The, are these permanent? I might as well YOLO it and <laughs> just, yeah, test it right here. Midfielder. Players I can afford, just... And how much money? I got 90. That's not going to... It is. I can do it. 60. Where are we? So you can reverse trades. I uh, just obviously have been off the, off the <laughs> haven't played Dream Team for ages. So yeah, Lewis is not in my affording. How much is he? Oh, he's just so we're gonna have to drop someone lower. So that's just for example though. I'm gonna reverse the trades here, but yeah, I can just what's rollback team? Rollback will roll you back to the teams. Oh, the end of the last round. Ah, oh, the changes. Okay, I'll just reverse trades. There we go. But that's something as example I'm gonna wanting to do uh, throughout. Uh, the game. So if I just cancel that, and there we go. That's I've. Got, I'll just save this here. That should fix up that remaining salary thing. As we wait for that. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, I'll try and refresh it, and we'll see if that fix up. Just reload the page. But yeah, if you like these kind of videos, uh, AFL, if you want to see yeah, the view of my team and all of that. Yeah, leave your comments if you want to see my trades, like uh, w like a preview to the next rounds. Um, this the review round will probably be a longer video, uh, really. Or I'm not sure how I even do the the trades, like the preview to the next round, because I'll t there's not much to talk about. It's just my trades, and it could be like a very short video. I can just talk about that in the next review video. You know what I mean? Uh, review of the round two, and I talk about the players I brought in and how well they did. So anyway, leave your thoughts. Uh, and again. Uh, if you're, I know a lot of people, uh, if you like Football Manager videos and FIFA, uh, just please don't dislike the video because it's not that. This is just something I really have a passion in. So even if you didn't, like, if this video doesn't interest you, but you watched it anyway, like if you just want to hear me talk or whatever, some people say that. Yeah, if you drop a like on the video, that would be amazing. But yeah, if you want to see more of these Dream Team videos, fantasy, all that kind of stuff, Super Coach, yeah, uh, I'm not really sure if I'll do it because that obviously will step up the amount of videos on my channel. Uh, but I feel, yeah, AFL Fantasy being from... Yeah, the AFL website is a big thing. So hopefully you enjoyed the video anyway. Maybe leave some feedback on my team. And of course, leave your comments how your team went, which players you were happy with. And of course, which players you were definitely unhappy uh, with, like me, Jack Nunes, uh, Mark Murphy, had a few disappointing guys in there. So leave your feedback and I'll see you guys next time.